So let's say we have um, a v, or I mean a w here, okay? So this is the, the vector w, and then we have a v over here, all right? So here's vector v, vector w, and these, like any vectors, they form a little parallelogram, right? If we were to add our v back up here, then we get that. So this is another v, and this is another w, okay? And this forms a parallelogram, because we have two sets of parallel sides. Okay. So this, let's see, what if we were wanted to find the area of this parallelogram? Uh, the area for a par parallelogram, area for parallelogram, is equal to base times height, right? But we can't just do one side times another um, because that wouldn't be the height. These have to be perpendicular to each other. So let's say this is the base down here, okay? So if that's the base, b equals what? And the length of this would be the magnitude or the length of v, right? So we have that, but now we need something that's perpendicular to it, okay? So if we want to find something perpendicular, we would just draw a perpendicular line down here and to find the height. Okay, so this is perpendicular, all right? And what, what does this even mean, though? Um, so what we need to do is look at the angles and the relationship between some things in this parallelogram. So theta is the angle that V makes with W, or W makes with V. It's the angle between them, all right? And this, this side over here, I think we can all agree that that is equal to the magnitude of W, right? Because that's just the length of W over here, this diagonal one. But that's the hypotenuse of our little triangle, of our skinny triangle over here on the left. What we want to find is the straight leg coming down and making um, a right angle with V. So what is this? Um, this? This height here is actually equal to our hypotenuse, so the length of W times, and since it's across from the angle, times sine of theta, okay? So what we actually would have, so we found our B and H, so area would equal B times H, so B magnitude of V times magnitude of W times sine of the angle between, okay? And so we're going to recall property number two um, from the cross product. And this thing here, this thing on the right side, that's actually equal to the magnitude of V cross W of that resultant vector. Okay. So anyways, um, this gives you the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors, gives you the area of the parallelogram between or formed by those two vectors. Okay, so this gives you the area of the parallelogram formed by the participating vectors. All right, so now on to, um, we're going to expand off of what we just learned. And um, so let's say we have our W down here. Okay, so there's W, and here is V. There's V there. And now let's say we have some U, so another vector, all right? Um, so we did learn about the parallelogram down here on the base, right? And so this is the parallelogram. And then, uh, and we have our, we drop the perpendicular down. Okay, so that's a perpendicular right there. This is the height of the parallelogram on the bottom. And now let's say we want to find, um, if we extend U's up here on all of them, this is going to form what we call a um, parallel parallel piped, okay, and I'll spell that out for you guys in a minute here. So if we basically just extend all of these out and make a box, okay, so this is called a parallel, like the word parallel, and then piped. We're going to call it that, and we'll call it P, okay, just because we like a lot of P's, apparently. Um, okay, so what is, what, what we're trying to find here is the volume of this parallel piped. So the volume, volume, of P, of capital P, is going to be equal to area of the base, area of base, and by base we just mean the, the parallelogram on the bottom, times the height. And again, whenever we talk about height, we're talking about um, what is perpendicular to the base, okay? So perpendicular things, okay? So let's say the, the base lies on this plane, okay? 
so it's in line with this. So we need to find u right now. It's not making a right angle with the plane. So we need to find um, how high is this parallel piped uh, with relation that it is like height in respect to or with respect to um, being 90 degrees making a 90 degree angle from the plane at all times, if that makes sense. Okay, so basically we just want it to be this this length here. We need to find how tall is the parallel piped with respect to the plane of the base. Okay, there we go, that was good phrasing. Okay, so how we do this is, um, we already know the area of the base, we just found it on the last slide. Uh, so that's going to be the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W times sine of the angle between them um, so that would be this one down here, right? Um, but now we know that that is equal to the magnitude of the cross product between the two vectors. Okay, so we'll just use this for simpler notation. All right. And then how do we find the, this height here, this perpendicular height? So that is going to be, we need to use u in some way. Um, so if we draw a little line here, we can form a triangle. Okay. And this angle, I'll call it, um, what should we call it? Uh, we'll call it phi or theta, we could call it phi or theta. Um, phi is kind of like theta, but on like vertically, with a vertical line. Yeah, anyways, okay, so if this length here, so I'll, I'll, I'll draw it down here. So this is u, all right? And the length of this, uh, of our hypotenuse of the triangle that I'm drawing, so this one, I'm just blowing up this triangle in here, okay? Um, so we wanna find how long is this side, because this is actually the height. So the height equals what? But anyways, so the hypotenuse of our triangle is going to be the magnitude of u, okay, simply the magnitude, the length of this vector here. Um, and then we have phi, or you could name it theta, whatever you want, it's just an angle, okay? And then the leg right here that's forming the height, uh, that's right next to the angle, so that's going to be something cosine uh, phi, and it'll be our hypotenuse, actually, so magnitude of u times cosine of the angle, okay? So that's what we're gonna plug in here. Um, so we found area of the base and we found height. So our volume, volume, is going to be uh, magnitude of V cross W times magnitude of U times cosine phi. Or you could also use theta, whichever you want to name the angle, okay? And this is actually I'm going to be equal to, I don't know if you guys remember this, uh, it might be a little bit off-putting with this little cross product thing here, the sign, but basically what we have is the magnitude of a vector times the magnitude of another vector times cosine of the angle between them. So, uh, as you might recall, this will be the one vector, so this is the first vector, V cross W, so that's the first vector, and this is equal to, so this thing, this line here, is equal to the cross or equal to the dot product, the dot product between the two involved vectors. Okay, um, so it's actually going to look like that. All right, and this gives you the volume of p. Okay, so another way uh, to write it perhaps is just building off of what we uh, went over. The volume is equal to the let's see the absolute value. Uh, because volume has to be positive, right? Just as area has to be positive and length have to be positive. So um, this is the absolute value of the dot product between u and the cross product of v and w, okay? And this um, is actually going to be equal to the absolute value of the determinant of u, v, and w, okay? Um, there might be a proof in your book on why how we make this leap here. But right now, I just take it at face value, and we, we just run with it, okay? And area um, of parallelogram, okay, is equal to, again, the magnitude of the cross product between the two vectors that form the sides of the parallelogram, okay? And this is equal to the determinant. We're just relating it to the determinant here, okay? So this is V, and that's W. All right, so now let's do an example. So let's find um, the area, find area of the of the parallelogram, and I'll draw it here. So let's say we have one, two, three, one, two, three. 
one, two, one, two. Okay, so let's say we make um, the following parallelogram. So we have one, two, and then a three, two, so something that ends there. Okay, so let's say we have a V and W. Um, let's just call this V and this one W. And we want to find the area of the parallelogram that it's making. Okay, so we want to find all of that in here. So V is the vector um, 1, 2. Okay, and W is the vector, oops, got a weird line going there. Uh, w is the vector 3, 2. All right, so the way we're going to set this up, technically you could do it as um, a 3 by 3 uh, in the sense that our, our third component, our Z component, is just 0, right? Because right now we're living on the X, Y plane. There is no third component, it just has two. So um, a way we could rewrite this is one comma two comma zero, um, or three comma two comma zero, okay? So to set this up as a three by three, what we would do is the following. So we would do our i hat, j hat, and k hat, okay? And then we'd set up um, v, so one, two, zero, and three, two, zero goes on the bottom for w, and we just continue as we know how to do um, by now. So this is i hat times the minor, so that'd be 2, 2, 0, 0, because remember we circle that, cross out everything in line with it, and we're left with this minor. And then we have we have to have our minus sign, remember alternating signs here. And then we have j hat, so if we circle that, cross out everything in line with it, we're left with 1, 3, 0, 0, and then plus k hat. Okay, so this is our last one, we're going to cross out those, and we get 1, 3, 2, 2. Okay, so this is going to turn out to be i hat times what? We have 2 times 0, so that's a 0, minus another 2 times 0, so that's 0, minus j hat, uh, which will be times 0 minus 0, right? Because these are both 0. And then plus k hat, which is actually going to be something non-zero, right? So that'll be a 1 times 2, going this way, so 2, minus... And here we have 3 times 2, so that'll be a 6, okay? So we're going to end up with um, 0i, zero 0i, zero plus 0j, and then minus 4k hat, right? So this is e equivalent to the vector 0, 0, negative 4, all right? And see how this, our resultant vector, is actually, it doesn't have any x or y component, right? Well, there's 0, but um, so it doesn't stick. In, it doesn't point in the x or y direction at all. It just points in the negative z direction. Okay. Um, anyways, so the, as far as the area, so to find the area, we would take the magnitude of this, of this resultant vector. Um, so I'll continue that on the next slide. So our resultant vector from uh, computing the cross product was 0, 0, negative 4, right? And as for the magnitude of, of our resultant vector, we would just square all of the components, right? Individually add them together, and then take the square root. So this is just gonna turn out to be, these are both zero, and this is 16, so square root of 16 comes out to be a positive four. And that is the area. All right, so that wraps it up um, for this video. I hope that helped in understanding the cross product, and good luck on your homework. We call it on